So, this isn't the best video recording I'm probably going to be making. I wanted to let you see a little bit more of my process. So here I've selected, so this is the box we're going to be working with. And here I've selected, um, I've selected my, this is my go-to brush for doing, um, for for using the glue recently and this is like the really thick glue I hope you can see it because I can't be monitoring I can't be see watching while I'm doing this so I'm just gonna pour some of that into this this jar I have and it's pretty thick still now at this point I want it to be more thick because it's going to make the it's it's going to be a much thicker kind of paper and I don't want it to be I don't want it's the glue effect to disappear by using too too watery glue so that's pretty much okay for me so I've been as I said before I've been uh, soaking this piece of paper for quite a while now. So I'm just taking it out. And I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just taking it out. There it is. It's all wet. I'm just trying to wipe off as much, like, get some water off of it. I think I'm going to do that. I'm actually going to dry it down, dry it off a bit, because otherwise it's just too wet. So here, just let me use this kitchen towel to be doing that. I'll just be opening it up a bit and patting it down so it's not too wet because I'm working with cardboard so I don't want the the water I don't want it to be too wet. That, that's the tricky thing with with working with the with glue with all of these watery substances while doing your gluing on of anything like as long as you're working with metals and wood and other other um what's you say other resi more resistant products that's fine but when you're working with with cardboards and papers it's so easy to ruin the box in the process so here I'm just going to first of all try to organize the fit I think I did that before let's see I think I already did that I'm not sure now and you see here that the, the, the lines I should not have bent this before starting that was a bad call that's where it is there's the the line of the top which can see coincides here so this is going to be laying out flat this way to be drying i'm not going to be going all around so i mean because i can be going all around like this so maybe i'm just going to start working it precisely like this so here we go this is already very wet of itself and I'm going to be wetting the whole surface here. It's broken here. I could have first put some, I could have first closed it off with some other paper, but since this is very thick paper already, I'm probably not, no, I actually will do that, silly me. Actually, that is exactly what I need to be doing. Just a second, please. So we'll just go for, here you go. I have a piece of white paper already cut out, which is just perfect. So I'm putting it right along here. And then through the back. Oops, there you go. So this is messy. I just wanted to walk you through the steps. And so you can see all my mistakes as well. Because I'm sure, I'm sure sure bound to make quite a few of them in this game so there you always want to cover the outside and the inside I mean the outer side 
as much as the inner side of whatever it is you are coating with all of your glue. So just a second, I'm thinking of getting myself some kind of prop. Here it is, so that that is not sticking directly on the, the, the table, so I don't glue it to the table. And here we just keep on coating everything with glue here. Just give it that coating like this and like this. Actually, I think you should make it, let that dry off before doing anything else. But, you know, I'm also not someone to be... I have a lot of patience and then I have none. So, as you see, I'm just coating it all completely covering the whole box. Like, I don't want to miss any places. I want this to be completely coated with glue. And there you go. So I'll be covering it more than once. And then... Oh, I forgot. I'm probably going to have to do this in two passages. Silly me. Because I don't want it to be drying that way so that when I close it, I actually want to dry it closed, almost as if it were covered with, um, here, you probably can't see me do this right now. Just a second. So what I'm doing is, that should be okay, just a sec. Let me check, let me check what it looks like. Yeah, there you go, that's good enough. So here, I'm, I don't want this part here to, then, once it's dried off, be glued in the, oh, silly me, be glued in such a way that if I close it, it cracks. So I'm going to have to dry this off the other way with the, with the top of the box closed. So anyhow, here we go. We're just like filling in all the glue. Okay. Co coating the whole back of this with glue right now. I've never done it this way before, so I'm not too sure of how it will work out. Still, I'm pretty confident that we're going to manage to make a really cool, a really cool piece of art here. Something that anyone would like. Well, any people who love the, the feeling of, I don't know, what era this kind of paper would be. Probably Victorian is not exact, is not correct. I have no idea these from, from when they are, actually, because they, they couldn't give me a date. They couldn't tell me how old this paper is, so whatever. But it does give me a kind of sort of old English feel, if not English, at least, you know, 800, 900s. It does give me that feel a bit, which is exactly what I'm going for. So here, I'm just going to turn this over right now and start placing it right now as it is as is so there you go made a little bit extra for it to be going around the corner so that's pretty much it Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there we go so placed it right there. And let me just do it this way and this way. So it's got both sides. Yeah, it's a little bit larger on both sides, so I should be able to tuck it in quite neatly. And there's the crack 
for the where it's exactly along the break in the in the back of this. I was thinking how cool it would be to make book you know um, bookcases with these with, with this kind of stuff. Actually that reminds me when I was a child, when I was a toddler, um, toddler, maybe I wasn't exactly a toddler anymore. Um, I was, it was 96, 97, was it 96 or 97? I think it was probably 96 going on 97. Excuse me, no, wrong. Uh, 86 going on 87, so... Yeah, I was making myself a whole lot younger there, wasn't I? Um, and we were living in Amsterdam. And I had been put in this Children of God boarding, kind of boarding school. Like all of the children of a certain age and above, but also some younger ones. Um, now that I think of it, like if I remember correctly, because of course... When you grow up, your memories are all a big mush push. Much push, excuse me. Um, and mom was pregnant with my brother Orion. And we were in Amsterdam. And this bus would come pick me up on Sunday nights and bring me back. I don't remember if it would bring me back on Saturday evenings or on Friday evenings, but I would stay the whole week at this, in this place for the whole week, so there you go. Let him, pulling it up like this, so that I can work this way. And so, practically, practically, I was not around when mom gave birth to my younger brother. By the way, almost all of us were born at home. And I say almost all of us because that was more than seven kids. Okay, it was seven kids, but then, okay. Let's leave all the rest of the details out because it's just too much for, for me to keep track of for starters. Anywho, so I was going there, uh, I was staying there all weekend, of course we do a lot of crafts, and I still remember uh, this one trip we took to a, to see how cheese was made, I mean, you're there in Holland, so you're gonna, you're gonna be seeing how cheese is made, and so anyhow, it was fun because they let us... Oh, sorry, I lifted that up too much, so there. It was fun because they let us kids help in the production of the, of the cheese. And I remember I was put to be rinsing off the cheese and passing it, putting it on this... Um, taking it from one, one big... Uh, what's you call it now? one big sink, let's say, where it was floating, rinse it off and put it up on a kind of desk where I think they were having us actually put the, put the, what's you call it, the label on top of it. I don't remember exactly which, I th I'm for sure, I'm pretty sure it must have been Gouda cheese. Boy, I do love, I really love cheese from all over the world. That was a treat. That was really a fantastic day out. But one of the projects that we worked on as kiddos in there. So there you go. And I messed up big time right there. So I think I'll just go ahead and turn it around this way. And then I'll find another way to be working with, with having it dry out without it getting glued anywhere. Um, it was fabulous for us kids because 
I mean, children, apart from the from the initial crying because they're they're away from their parents, if you know how to treat children and keep them busy, you can pretty much distract them from their separation anxiety or whatever. Um, and one project that I made for my mom as a gift for when my brother was born, when Orion was born, was a book. It was a bookcase made of some very thick paper, kind of like this. Very textured, heavy, heavy texture paper. And I remember it was a an abstract red kind of red, red and and cream colors that were like all mixed together pretty abstract and modern i would say but yeah good memories no wonder i'm thinking of these i'm 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 attracted to this kind of stuff it really does tie in a lot with my childhood upbringing, family memories, and everything. So there we go. I'm pulling this a little bit more. So they're pulling it, opening here a little bit, and pulling this all the way around, and just coating it all with, this is gonna take quite a while for it to dry off. The violin took the violin case each time I work with the even thinner paper takes about 24 to 48 hours to dry depending on how hot it is. The area where I live is cold and humid. Like you can see the humidity the the, the little <laughs> molecules of humidity right in front of your face when when the when the fog starts rising from the ground that was kind of pretty much the case this morning so i'm making a mess obviously making a massive mess obviously there you go there you go there was the bubble did you see that there was a bubble right there which is why you need to pull it, pull it, stretch it, stretch this out. And it's inevitable that with this, there's going probably going to be a lot of bubbles. So I am going to have to pop those later on if I don't manage to get rid of them. There you go. See, also because I'm opening and closing the whole time, this would really need to like just sit still somewhere and not be bothered. There's bound to be bubbles. Right. Well, actually looking at it, like you want to see if there's bubbles, you just put it kind of oblique. You look at it like this way, perpendicular. That's pretty good, actually. It's coming out pretty well. Sorry if you're not seeing all of the work. If you're not seeing everything, because I keep on moving around and I really have to lift it up. So this is probably going to be a good stand for it. And I could probably just let it go that way. That would be a good one. Oh, there you go. There you go and have it set like this. There you go. So it's kind of bent anyways. I'm probably going to have to cut that open. It's going to probably break anyways. We will see. Or I'm going to have to bend it over somehow. Let me see. How else can I do this? Ah. Maybe. Just maybe. See, that's the thing with this kind of work. You have to always kind of be inventing ways to be. Maybe if, just maybe, if I put it on a stand like this, might help it even more. Yeah, that's actually higher up. 
it's higher up this at that point I'd pull this one further out there you go and I'm gonna need to put something else underneath here which will prop it up some more so let me just check what else can I use that's probably not enough no it's not tall enough Ooh. Ooh, just look at that. I got these two horsies. Let me just see. Maybe that's going to be even better. To have these two horsies. These two horse statues that I'm going to be... There's one on one side. One on the other. I'm going to be seeing if I can somehow restore these horse statues as well. In the near coming future. Hey, there you go. It almost looks like a little house. Let me just turn that around for you, so you can see it your side. There, something like that. So that way, I got pretty much, I got quite a bit of the curves taken care of. I just have to close this piece off. So let's take care of that right now, real quick. And then we're going to leave it to dry. And come back for more finishing touches. I'm gonna have to get it wet again tomorrow once like it's gonna dry out now and then tomorrow I'm gonna have to get it all sopping wet again in order for me to finish the other parts or else I might choose a different way of handling that. I might also choose to use some ribbon instead of finishing, like make the finishing touches with ribbon rather than with more paper, which could give it a really cool glamorous look as well. Hmm, I'm starting to inspire myself. That's the cool thing about getting creative. Like you start out like you feel like you don't have any ideas. But once you start getting into action, all of a sudden it's almost like the ideas start finding you. You have to stop them because there's just too many. They're coming at you from all directions. Like a huge flock of crazy birds. Okay, never mind my birds. Never mind my, <laughs> my ideas on these things. <laughs> Hitchcock. All right. So there we go. So, oops, I'm going to have to find some other way to do this because that keeps coming around and I don't like it one bit. I need to find a way to let it close almost completely, let it close almost completely like this so that Sorry, you're probably not seeing any of this. So here, let me just do this right now. This is the difficult part. I was thinking, how do I get around this difficult part where it just keeps popping up? I hate it when it keeps popping up like this. 
Looks like I'm making a mess here. There you go. Now you just have to keep insisting until it kind of sort of starts drying off enough. The, 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 there comes a moment where the glue starts taking. I have to exercise some patience. Here, let me get all of this mess out of the way for you. I have to kind of exercise a bit of patience while waiting for the glue to take when you're doing these kind of curvatures here. I do hope it doesn't mess things up too much for me. I'm seeing that the glue has already been take is already taking so much that if I leave it like this any further, I'm going to be ruining it all. So I gotta find a way to do it. Kind of balance it off. Keep it balanced. Ooh, 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 I'm a genius. There you go. There's the balance I needed. There you go. Now, isn't that beautiful? There you go. Now, I might have ripped off, as you see, I got some. I might have ripped off some of them. You have to act quick but with this kind of paper, apparently. Um, the way it's made, the top surface can come up super easy. And so some of it stuck to my fingertips, as you see. So if that happens, don't freak out. You don't have to throw everything away. Even if you do kind of sort of a little bit damage, there's more than one way you can fix it. I'm just thinking that maybe if I can turn it this way... Just thinking of a way that I can turn it. Like, oh, there you go. That's good. That's a good idea. There you go. So I found the way to turn the, the top part as well so that I can just leave it like that. But I'm just in love with this little piece of art here. here let me, let, let, let's show you a little bit better. So that's how the horses are helping keep it up. And I've bent it that way. And so, yeah, there you go. Oops, sorry, can't fake book never allows. You see the you see the bubbles right there? That's where you can see them really good. There's the bubble. There's the bubbles. So I'm gonna have to find a way to get those out of there. Um, I'm most probably gonna have to. Well, I could no, I can't pull it any further right now. Otherwise, I'm just going to start messing things up because my hands are too sticky. So I need to wash my hands before I touch anything else. But what can we do here? Just a second. Let me find one of those pins. I know I got a pen somewhere. I've got bobby pins all over the place. Or a needle. A needle works as well. So here I got a needle. So what we're going to do now, what I'm going to try to do, is burst the bubble there I burst the bubble so now that I burst the bubble let's just try to ease the I don't know how to hold this and let you see what I'm doing at the same time try to ease the let me see like maybe that's going to work. Maybe. No, it's not going to work. Let's see. I'm trying to ease the air out and press this down. There you go. See, I eased the air out by pressing it towards where the hole is. And that way, it's sticking. Now it's sticking flat again. I'm going to have to do the same thing right here. So... 
take this and you pierce it. Sorry, put the thing in my mouth. It's kind of like a cigar right now. And you pierce it in such a way, like super small. There you go. And you push the air out towards where the hole, where you made the hole. And then you just like pat the whole thing down. So there you are. That should be all right. Oh my God, this almost looks like a candy box or something. It's so cool. I'm just, I'm in love with it. I'm in love with it. I just love this little thing. Hat's coming out. This is gonna look pretty much like a bookcase. No book inside, no. Maybe candy at this point. I said it looks like a candy box. Well, that's all for now from the Urban Tuscan Farmstead. And we'll meet up again to see the rest of this process. Ciao for now.